Experiment 2. Lab techniques, practices, and concentration units. In this lab, you will gain experience in some of the basic techniques encountered in the first year chemistry labs. Also, you will be introduced to some of the practices used in writing of lab reports. Part A of this experiment used to use saturated solution of potassium dichromate. It was changed for several reasons. Here are some of the pictograms associated with potassium dichromate. Some of the hazard statements include oxidizer, toxic if swallowed, harmful in contact with skin, fatal if inhaled, may cause genetic defects, may cause cancer, may damage fertility, organ damage, and is very toxic to aquatic life. The safety comparison becomes clear when comparing the SDS pictograms of sodium chloride, because there aren't any. For this experiment, you will be using a saturated sodium chloride solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of a solute and a solvent. The solute is the substance that is dissolved in a solution, in this case, sodium chloride. The solvent is the substance in which the solute is dissolved, in this case, water. First, you will dispense 6 milliliters of sodium chloride solution into a pre-weighed evaporating dish. In order to determine the amount of solute and solvent in the solution, you will need to evaporate the solvent, water, by heating the solution over a water-filled beaker on a hot plate. You will then reheat, just like the picture shows, and re-weigh the solute to a constant mass to ensure that all of the solvent has been removed. Note, the last mass of the dry solute recorded is the one you will use in calculations. The data that will be used in different calculations are the volume of sodium chloride solution, this is the amount dispensed, 6 milliliters. The mass of sodium chloride, the solute, is determined by subtracting the weight of the empty evaporating dish from the evaporating dish with the solid sodium chloride. The moles of sodium chloride can be determined by dividing the mass of sodium chloride by the molar mass of sodium chloride, and the mass of water, the solvent, is determined by subtracting the evaporating dish with the solid sodium chloride from the evaporating dish with the sodium chloride solution. The volume of sodium chloride is calculated by dividing the mass of sodium chloride by the density of sodium chloride, which you will have to look up in the CRC handbook. You will have all the information required to do the various concentration calculations to determine the volume of solution, the mass of solute, the moles of solute, and the volume of the solute, as well as the mass of the solvent, the water, and the volume of the solvent. Molarity is calculated by dividing moles of solute, sodium chloride, by the volume in liters of the solution. Molality is determined by the moles of the solute, sodium chloride, divided by the mass in kilograms of the solvent, water. Parts per million is the mass of solute in milligrams divided by the mass of the solution in kilograms. You can determine percent mass by mass by dividing the mass of the solute, sodium chloride, by the mass of the solution and multiplying it by 100%. You can determine percent mass by mass of solvent by dividing the mass of the solute, sodium chloride, by the mass of the solvent, water, and multiplying it by 100%. Percent mass by volume will be calculated by dividing mass of solute, sodium chloride, by the volume of solution in milliliters and multiplying by 100%. Percent mass by volume solvent will be calculated by dividing mass of solute, sodium chloride, by the volume of solvent in milliliters and multiplying by 100%. Percent volume by volume is determined by dividing the volume of solute in milliliters by the volume of solution in milliliters and multiplying by 100%. 
Significant figures. When you add or subtract, your answer should be in the least number of decimal places. For example, the two point zero zero four zero plus point one zero should be represented with two decimal places, point one zero. When you multiply or divide, your answer should be represented in the least number of significant figures. For example, the answer to point zero zero four zero times point one zero 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 should be represented with two significant figures, point zero 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 four zero. When you encounter a combined equation, you first add or subtract, then multiply or divide. For example, one point zero zero four one minus point zero zero two divided by two point zero zero. As you can see, there's five significant figures, one significant figure, and three significant figures. This will give you an answer that should be represented in three significant figures. In order to determine the average deviation u, first take the average of your measurements by adding all of the trials and dividing by the number of trials you completed. Next, you look at each of your measurements and calculate how far it deviates from the average. Then you take the average of these deviations. In this example, the average deviation is 0 0.02. Your final answer with deviation should be the average of your trials plus or minus the average deviation. Note, the deviation must be reported with the same number of decimal places. There are many types of glassware you will encounter in the lab, including beakers, burettes, Erlmeyer flasks, pipettes, graduated cylinders, and volumetric flasks. You should only measure volumes with volumetric glassware. Beakers and Erlmeyer flasks are not considered to be volumetric glassware. There are two types of balances, the top loading balance that reads to two decimal places and the analytical balance that reads to four decimal places. When referencing in this course, you should be using the online CRC. When constructing a spreadsheet, you should include the following. Heading, name, ID, date, column, headings, and units, properly formatted cells, border around data. When creating a graph from the data you collected in the lab, be sure to include a descriptive title, name, ID, date, axes labeled with parameters and units, major and minor grid lines, proper number of decimal places on scales, graph should fill at least two-thirds of the page, contain a line of best fit, should not contain any shading in the plot area, and should not include a legend. What are some aspects missing from this graph? None of the data points fall within the lower region of the graph. Therefore, the scale must be changed. The major and minor grid lines are not present. A tread line and the equation of the line are missing. A descriptive title and name and date are missing. The y-axis needs a title and should include units. And the x-axis needs a title and should include units. Interpolation is estimating a value between known data points. For example, if you collected data state your dependent variable had a value of 284.2, you find that on your y-axis, and draw a straight line using a ruler to your line of best fit. You then draw a straight line down toward the x-axis to interpolate the independent variable, in this case, 312.9. Procedure. Your data will be recorded in your laboratory notebook first, not the report sheets. Part A. Reading scales and analytical balances. Perform steps 1 through 4 in the lab manual, then move on to parts B and C. You should complete as much as you can before returning to part A. Your instructor will demonstrate proper use of balances in the lab. 
Be sure to record all data values in your notebook and always include units. Part B, literature citations. Record all data obtained and the literature citation in your notebook. Part C, top loading balances, burettes, and volumetric glassware. Before using volumetric glassware, they should be rinsed three times with warm water, three times with deionized water, and three times with the solution being used. To clean volumetric glassware, rinse three times with hot water and three times with deionized water. In part D, you will be making a graph using Excel. Refer to your lab manual for how to instruct a graph using Excel. There is also a PowerPoint video that will take you through this process. Part E of this lab deals with significant figures.